Are you ready to transform your game scenes from ordinary to extraordinary? Today, we're delving into the captivating world of post-processing effects. Let's turn your scenes into visual masterpieces. Follow along as we add an extra sparkle and depth to your virtual worlds. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Ranger Realm Studios. If you're passionate about Unreal Engine 5 like we are, you are in the right place. Today, we're diving deep into the world of post-processing effects. Let's finalize the look of our game scenes. Let's start by setting up a post-processing volume in our scene. This volume will determine the area where our effects will be applied. Go over to the Place Actors panel and type in Post Process in the search bar and the Post Process volume will show up. Drag and drop it into the world and scale it up to fit the area you want it to affect. Once scaled to your desired size, with the volume selected, head over to the details panel on the right, and here we can tweak a variety of settings. Let's start with the exposure to control how bright and dark our scenes appear. So go down to exposure, open it up, and in here you can then enable various settings in order to change how the camera in your game is affected. So if we hit play, you can see how it starts off dark and it slowly gets brighter. Much like our eyes, the camera in Unreal Engine is automatically set to have a similar exposure to when it, so that it takes time for the eyes to adjust to the new brightness. So what we can do in here is go down to the Min EV 100 and the Max EV 100 and change it. If we bring up the Min EV to zero, you can already see the scene got darker and we can bring down the Max EV which will then change the brightness. But if we keep it both at the same number, there will not be an adjustment in the eyes or in the camera exposure itself. There will not be that slow increase in brightness. It will just stay the same brightness the entire time. We'll bring this back down to a minus one, make it something that we actually enjoy. As you can see, if I bring the max EV down though, the scene will just stay bright. So let's keep this at a positive one. So there's still a small adjustment but it's not nothing crazy you can also then change how fast you want it to change or you can click on let's make this a little bit bigger you can click on the exposure compensation and when you adjust that that will adjust overall how much exposure comes in to your camera how much light you let in or how much light you don't let in as you can see now i'm outside of post-processing volume None of the changes take effect, so make sure that when you do change something, you are inside of the volume, as it only affects anything inside of this area. So let's turn down the brightness. Let's walk out of it. And you can see everything is starting to change back to the normal settings as if it weren't changed. And we walk back into it it will automatically adjust to the new settings that we have. Let's keep it a little bit dark and gloomy. I like the feel of it. And then let's go ahead and close our exposure. And next, let's add a little bit of glow to our scenes with the bloom. So scroll back up, go to bloom. And in here, you can then enable and adjust the intensity and the threshold. So let's enable them. And then let's adjust the intensity that we have. Start increasing it and see how we like it. As you can see, the way the light shines through the trees looks a lot different than if it were normal. Also adjust the threshold and the intensity. And you can see how our sun differs when we change the threshold. How there's much more of a glow effect the lower we go. There's less of a glow effect around it as we increase. Let's keep this at 0 0.05. We'll change the intensity to 4.3. I like the way this feels. Now let's cover the depth of field. So close out down to bloom and scroll down to depth of field. In here we can work with the focal distance as well as the depth of the blur radius as well as the blur. So let's enable the focal distance and then start adjusting the numbers a little bit. If you make them too big, you won't really notice much difference. But if you start playing with smaller numbers, you should be able to see a blurry effect. As you can see now, everything is blurry from the very beginning. If we increase it and still stay low, now you can see there's still a slight blur on everything. 
let's change it back down to 40 so you can real or 20 so you can really see it like there's no detail in the trees as they're further away and the same as when the player is actually in the world everything is blurry so let's increase that maybe to 75 now there's still a slight blur on everything which I think has a very nice characteristic and a nice stylized effect with it. Let's go up a little bit more though. 85 maybe? 85. That's a nice feeling. All right, after the depth of field, let's talk about color grading. Color grading was already open and here you can see various different settings for the color. If you remember when we were talking about our lighting, we can use temperature for our lights. You can also then adjust the global settings which will then have the saturation, contrast, gamma gain, and the offset. So what we're gonna work with today is the contrast, the saturation, and the gamma. So we're gonna enable all of these. And for the saturation, we can work with the little color wheel and see how we want our scene to saturate. And as you can see, depending on where we go on the wheel, the way our colors look changes in the scene. And just completely go overboard with it so you really have to take your time to fine-tune the way you want your game to look or your scene to look towards the end and then same with the gamma and with just a few tweaks in these few settings that we have our entire game is starting to feel a lot different than it did before because so now we are currently in our post-processing volume but when we step out of it you can see the entire game looks and feels different. And from here you can even see it is mainly, it's not even about the character being in the volume, but your camera being in the volume. Because if I rotate this way now, you can see the changes that are happening. This camera is already in my post-processing volume. So let's bring it back out. This is our scene before. And this is our scene after. Now let's talk about some additional settings that you can consider. Let's say you want to add multiple different post-processing volumes to your level. If you scroll down, you can change the post-processing volume priority, which will then make sure whichever volume has the priority will be displayed in the scene. So right here under post-process volume settings, priority. So whichever volume has the highest number in here will have the priority being displayed on your camera. There is also a variable in that same section called enabled. This is a variable you could use in your level blueprint and call it whenever a certain event happens and you want the post-processing to be enabled or disabled. Unreal Engine does a real good job with the water of automatically changing it once you enter the water. So you could have similar effects happening inside of this post-processing volume. It could be active at all times or disabled at all times, but something happens in the world that you need to change it and that will then change it for you. But we will talk about blueprints in a future series. Another setting in the post-processing volume settings would then be the infinite extent. This is something you would do if you only plan on using one post-processing volume across your entire level. You can simply click it and then while the box will stay the same size, the effect will then cover the entire level that you have. As you can see, if we disable it, it changes back to what we had before. And if you enable it, no matter where we are in our world, it will always keep the post-processing volume enabled. And then lastly, you scroll further down under actor, you have the initial lifespan. You can adjust the initial lifespan in conjunction with an enabling it and you can trigger certain effects to happen which will only work for a certain amount of time before it terminates itself. So depending on what you plan on doing this could be a very nice feature you could have something trigger it that it starts popping up and then after a certain amount of time it will then disable itself. And that's the magic of post-processing in Unreal Engine 5. These tools, when used wisely, can elevate your game's visuals to a professional level. This tutorial was useful. Give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with fellow enthusiasts. Stay tuned for more tutorials. As always, we're here to light the way in Unreal Engine 5. Don't forget to subscribe and keep it unreal.